back with another installation, an episode, if you will, of the Queen City Film Festival's Quarantine Conversation. I am here today with the lovely, immensely talented, and she's going to be humble about it. I already see it coming. <laughs> Ridiculously talented, Nicole Shamir. Now, for those of you who don't know Nicole, um, she just came up onto my radar recently, but I was completely blown away by her talent. Now, she's a composer, she's an actress, she's an educator, but most importantly, she just put together a marvelous piece called Journey, a short film that has really wowed a lot of people. And if you haven't seen it yet, go to the Quarantine Theater on uh, our YouTube page and check it out. But please, Nicole, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Oh, man, I am blown away by you. And uh, I want to get right into it. Um, you, you wrote and directed uh, Journey, a short yes. film, uh, just recently. Talk to me a, bit, a little bit about that project and how it came about and, and what you're doing. Um, so I'm good friends with Lamar K. Cheston. Um, he's one of the lead actors in the film that I'm in. Um, we've been friends. Uh, we did a, a, a play called Making It Big. I don't know, maybe in like 2010, 11. So we've been friends for a really long time. And um, we came up with an idea at one point where it was, I was going to write something for him and I, and he would write something for him and I. And... Um, I didn't, I, I never really worked on it. Like we both said, okay, we're gonna do it. And then we never really did it. Um, I moved to Atlanta in 2013. I lived there for two years to pursue acting full time. Um, I'm a union actress, so that didn't really work out well for me because Atlanta is a right to work state. So there wasn't really a lot of union work there for me. Um, but at the time I was dating a guy that was in a band and um, when we broke up, we were cordial about it, but there was these two songs that I really liked. So the songs that open Journey and end Journey are from the band that he was in, Quita Dream. Wow, and, okay. Um, so for me, everything happens musically. Like, um, you know, the universe speaks to me through music. And so when I heard these songs, that's how Journey in my head. And then um, from there, I, I kind of wrote uh, that first episode from listening to the music. Um, and so we well, do plan on, I left it so that there could be more um, to the story. So we left it so that we could write more. Now Lamar is like, all right, I'm gonna help you write on it. Cause he never did his scene for the two of us. But now yeah. that I've, I've gotten it out there. Um, and I mean, I was really blessed because it initially it was gonna cost me a lot of money to make it. And then I ended up, I do brand ambassador work sometimes. And I ended up working at this store where they allow people to shoot photos for free. And so I was like, hey, well, what about videos? And she's like, yeah, sure. So I got to film there for free. Um, my friend Alexis is a blessing. And we did a skit in my home one day and the guy that filmed our skit in my home, Adam Gambrel, he is amazing. And he was like, yeah, I, you know, he does corporate work. So he's never really done artistic things. So he was like, I, I, I love it. And so he was like, just tell me. And I'm like, well, what's your budget? And he's like, I, I just want to do this thing. It's creative and I want to do it. Um, so I had him on board. And then my friend, Chris Charles, um, he was my husband in a play that we were in when we were living in Atlanta that never happened. But <laughs> um, you froze. You still there? He, he was like, yeah, you know, he worked for Delta. Ready, go. Um, and then we had Chris Charles, and he was my husband in a play that we were in in Atlanta that never really happened. Um, but um, he works for Delta, so he flew up for free and he came to DC. We filmed that day. I picked him up that night. We filmed that day and then dropped him back off at the airport at like four in the evening. Um, so everything was filmed in, in that day. Um, and it was great. You know, there, I learned a lot from the experience and I do, you know, there were some shots that I wanted that I couldn't see because I'm on camera. Um, but this was a learning experience for me. I've never directed anything before. This is my first time writing anything before. Um, 
you know, I ran it by a couple of people that I have, I'm friends with that have done some really good work and they gave me some ideas, but then, um, so my character journey, I really didn't want it to be typical. So that was another thing, like the conversation that Lamar and I had together when I, when I gave him the concept initially and it was like, well, why did they break up? And, you know, typically it's the guy's fault as to why the relationship doesn't work out. And so he was like, well, you know, let's try to make it a little bit different. So he did help in that regard with, with journey, with, with giving me a different perspective about, you know, let's not make it um, always be the guy's fault. Cause really there are a lot of times when there are some women who are the reason for right. the um, downfall of a relationship. Um, and so, you know, and then other people were like, well, maybe, you know, when she sees him and then she calls him and then they hook up, but I didn't want that to happen either. Like I, I realized that journey is not over um Taurus at this point in her life but I didn't also want to be like oh well then she hooks up with them because I feel like that was kind of typical too um well let me so let me jump in because one you you've said so much about this project <laughs> and I, yeah. I gotta tell you so since we've been screening it in in quarantine theater I've gotten numerous messages about this film where did you get this? Where? Oh my God, this is awesome. Blah, 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 blah. And I'll share all of this stuff with you. But some of the comments that I've gotten over the phone, people love the music. Mm -hmm. They they were astounded with the twist at the end and how complete the story was in such a short amount of time. Yeah. Um, Lamar K. Chester, who is my brethren, my brother from a project that I produced a couple of years ago called which starred him and Okima. Um, I saw. Okay, okay, you saw that. Okima T. Moore was a, another relationship picture that he was in. And he was sort of the opposite guy in, in, in sh. And, mm -hmm. and this one, I kind of, I felt a lot of tension with him. I almost didn't like him. Um, yeah. But when you started doing your thing at the end, and I'm not going to give too much away, that's when it kind of, I was like, oh, wait, I'm really off balance here. I don't know what I just saw. Bravo. Right. Um, Chris Charles, what a great uh, choice. He was amazing. Um, so all in all, to be said, that project was spot on. You should be highly commended. I can't wait to share it with a larger group and a larger audience because that was quality work. When did you shoot that? And when, when was that all put together? Um, when did we shoot? What month are we in? I've lost days. <laughs> it's April. Um, it's mid-April. It's almost May. Get out. Yeah. So we shot it, I want to say in February, hmm. we shot it in, in, in a day. It was one of those days where like it rained, I don't know if you could tell, but it was raining off and on. So we would get in the car, wait for the rain to stop, then get out of the car and do it all over again. But as a matter of fact, it was in March because um, Lamar was in Pittsburgh, I think most of February. So again, it was trying, and Christopher acts a lot too and travels a lot. So it was working yeah. with everyone's schedule and trying to you know, make sure that we had, we could nail down a day. So it was a day in March. Um, that we that we actually filmed. So um, everything uh, had already begun. The, the the lockdowns and the quarantine had begun. It felt to me a little stark in terms of the background. When you guys were outside, I was like, this must have happened during the quarantine. No, it was before the quarantine had started. Okay, okay. But yeah. the but the onset of COVID nineteen had already begun. No. No. Maybe it wasn't in March. <laughs> okay. All good. I'm I'm trying I'm trying to pinpoint it because you know there's a lot of creatives out here that are doing things um during this time. And by the way, shout out to your cinematographer because he was dope too. Amazing. Um, That's Adam Gambrel. Yeah, he was dope. Everything, the editing. He really was. Yeah. He did a great job and uh you know for 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 creatives right now enough respect for adam for for taking his you know honed corporate skills and bringing it into a creative realm i'm sure he has found a new path and a new way that he's going to pursue now um you know with everything that's been going on with with the crisis the health crisis in this country 
how are you making out in terms of creativity and are you inspired? Are you stunted by this? How is it impacting you right now? So I think initially I was kind of overwhelmed. Um, so I'm like, I bought, I, I have a passion planner. Um, I'm on my second one. So every year I buy a new one and you know, like it gives you the time of day and schedule. So I'm really like, I'm the type of person that if I don't have some type of set schedule to stick to, like I will be all over the place. I've, I'm on quarantine project number five million and one <laughs> because I've got to like give myself something to do. <clears throat> but um, so initially it was like, how do I, how do I continue to live the way I'm used to with a schedule? Like literally it would be from nine to 10, I'm, I'm doing this, you know, I'm teaching a class from 12 to one, and then I've got this, you know, so my days are so jam packed, but they're so on schedule. And so now it's like all of this free time and, and no schedule. Um, so it was nice when casting directors started doing like Zoom sessions. I've been to a lot of those. Um, Actors Connection does the free at three. So I was going to a lot of those, um, you know, free Zoom meetings. Um, before we weren't allowed to like go to parks and stuff, I was hiking and <laughs> things. Um, you know, I would go out, like I'm, I'm very nature oriented. So I would like go out and hike and sit on a cliff somewhere and, and write. Yeah. Um, so, you know, continuing to add on to journey um, was something that I have more time to do now. So I did that and I've been working out because I know that this is going to end at some point. And so I do want to be ready. You know, I've updated my resume and my website and things like that. So I'm at this point, I'm just in preparation mode um, because from talking to other casting directors, they just keep saying, you know, when this is over, it's going to be this big boom. And because things had to stop filming, when they start filming, there's going to be this flood of work. And so I'm just trying to be in a position to be able to, you know, get a little bit of that flood my right. way, right um, take advantage of that. But also, you know, using this time to work on um, Journey, because like I said, I left it so that there would be more um, or, or um, room to grow. And so, you know, continuing to work on that has also been something that's kept me focused and grounded. <laughs> Nice, nice. Are you following any of these hokey internet conspiracy theories that are going on out there about this whole time period? And if so, what's the one that stood out most in your mind? Um, so I tried not to, you know, at one point I dated a conspiracy theorist. Um, and so a lot of that information is so overwhelming because I mean, some of it makes sense and some of it could be true, but what do you do with that information? Like right. now I know, you know, who killed Malcolm X and why, and why Bob Marley was the front runner and not Peter Tosh. But now what do I do with this information? So I try to, you know, stay a little bit disconnected from some of that. Um, but I mean, I have heard like the, the 5G towers and, um, you know, I have a friend that was like, it wasn't a bat and the government does not want 5G. That's not our push. Um, um, so I don't believe that that is the, you know, I think that cell towers and radiation can cause problems, but I don't think that that's what the origination of this was. I, I, do, I you know, I've seen Asia do or go through great means to, or not really Asia, but China to control their population. So, I, you know, that's my theory is that something went wrong. Somebody dropped a tube <laughs> and got it on themselves. And I don't know, you know, it spread yeah. from there. Um, but I, you know, I, so I'm not really, but again, like I, even knowing that, like, what do you do with that? Like, how does right. it help me? How does it change what's happening now? Um, it's just really overwhelming to get a lot of that information. And I'm really, I'm a minimalist. I don't like a whole lot of stuff and clutter and, you know, I like to keep, keep a clean head and house and spirit. So having all that stuff in there is not really beneficial to me. And I, I can dig that. And that brings me sort of to my next, you know, segues me into my next question, which is how do you manage that? How do you manage the influx of media, all of the different stories and angles and theories how do you deal with that personally? Because there's a lot of people out here that are soaking it up. They're taking it in. Now, I'm a media guy, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a BTS guy. I'm a behind-the-scenes guy. It's all, you'll never see me on the screen like this ever again after the quarantine <laughs> conversation. This is it, you know? But I, I, I take in a lot of information, right? Mm -hmm. 
right? And I process it. But I also know how to turn it off. I know how to do other things to balance it out. What's your method for, you know, sort of managing this influx of information during the age of information and technology? And, you know, how are you staying grounded? Um, <clears throat> so I think I'm also really good at compartmentalizing that. So it's not, you know, I can be on social media and then see something like a caption and then just scroll by really fast. Like I don't, I try not to, um, get sucked into that rabbit hole, um, of that too much. And again, like, like I said, dating someone that was really like, we would literally stay up until five in the morning and I would say nothing. And he would just be giving me all of these stories of, did you know this? Well, this is not really what happened there. And so, I mean, I kind of opened my eyes to like when certain things happened saying, hmm, I wonder if the story that they're giving me is the real story. Um, and so I'm able to, you know, separate the two. Sorry if the airplane, I live not far from the airport. So it's going it's over. Good. Like, okay, oh, they have- dropping bombs. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I guess people are learning how to fly. It's like a tiny airport near me. So I think it's one of those, like plane school airplanes. But um, yeah, so, you know, <clears throat> I'm just able to, I guess, just um, turn it off. You know, I, I'll go on social media for what it's for. You know, you have to keep in, in touch um, with like the entertainment people. You know, they're doing a lot of monologue challenges and things like that. So I use it for what it's for. I go on TikTok and laugh at some videos. Um, And you know, like there's, I like to dance, but I'm not a dancer. (laughs) But there are a lot of dance instructors that are giving free classes that, you know, I felt like it would have been a waste of money for me to take a class because I'm not good. But now that they're free, I'm like, oh, let's do a dance class. So, you know, I just, I just try to do those types of things. Um, to keep me occupied and and I just know you know I don't I try not to get sucked into the the whole when you get onto social media and into all the stories because you could be on there forever following Mm -hmm. a trail of of all of these videos that people post and conspiracies and I have friends I have friends on both sides of the of the fence so I, I you know I get like if I'm watching their stories I get an equal amount of you know, this is crazy as opposed to see y'all weren't listening before, but I bet you're listening now kind of thing. Right, right, so, right, right. That's you know, I, 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 I take in a little bit of it, but I try not to let it like consume me. Mm. Where, when this is all said and done, how do you feel like you've improved? I know we're still in progress. I know we're still working on it and we're still in the midst of it. But what are one of the things that you'd like to see, a skill that you've picked up or how you've become stronger or better after the quarantine is over? Okay. So I actually bought some studio equipment. Um, I got like a interface and a microphone and a MIDI keyboard. Um, I sing, but people tell me I should sing more than what I do. I do it like if I have to, or somebody asked me to sing the national anthem or something for a basketball game, I'll do it. Um, but so, you know, I'm learning how to use those skills and kind of record on my own. There's a site that I go to where they look for people, um, to sing songs in the style of another song. So once I learn how to create my own music, then, um, I can get paid. And, you know, so for me, it's trying to find things to do that will allow me to stay home because we don't know how long this is going to last. You know, they give you a date, but do they really know for sure that that's the Mm -hmm. actual date? Mm -hmm. And even still, you know, I was a substitute teacher, I taught drama, I worked for the NBA, and I act. So all of my industries are (laughs) dry. (laughs) And who knows when they will be back, maybe in the fall for school. Um, So, you know, just trying to find things that I can do at home, you know, trying to make my own voiceover. I have a voiceover reel and demo. um, But being able to do voiceover work from home. So that's why I got these, the studio equipment. So that's one of the new things that I've picked up. Um, that I'm trying to work on so that I will be able to continue to have some type of income if I do have to stay home longer than expected. Right on, right on. I can do all of that. Um, and great um, great leadership on your part to to stay that focused and grounded because people tend to get, you know, sort of wishy-washy in times like these. And this is nothing that we've ever seen before. But I'm definitely seeing some people go off the rails um, according to their social media. A lot of my friends who are in the industry and motion pictures and television um, are doing well. They're using the time wisely. Um, 
but for you know really a lot of people out here they're lost they don't know what to do with themselves mm -hmm. um, they don't have that uh, additional anchor to keep them on the ground while all this foolishness is flying by right. what can you bring to them what words of wisdom and advice encouragement a philosophy if you will that thread of peace that you have what is it that you can tell those people mm. um i mean honestly it, it really just depends on the people I, like i've seen a lot of memes that people have posted about like you're supposed to be using this time to be productive and to learn a new skill and then other people are kind of saying that that's judging people who don't really you know who have certain anxieties or or um you know they just don't know how to function in a time like this and then you know putting too much pressure on them to be something that they don't know how to be at this time so i mean it's, it really just depends on the person and and how you deal um with this um situation so i, I watched a movie i don't know if you've ever seen melancholia i cannot remember the actress that's mm -hmm. in it but basically this woman um and she's a, a big I'm actress. I'm I think writing, writing it down melancholia Mel melancholia so melancholia is an actual um mental disorder mm -hmm. um and oh, wait. I can't, I, can't I, have to look, I have to look her up because she's a big name actress, um, but I don't think she's living anymore. I think she's one that passed away. Um, Melon. Gotcha. Yeah, the film came out in 2011 and it is. Oh, yeah, I see it. I see it. What is her name? That is uh, Kirsten Dunst. Kirsten, yeah, Kirsten Dunst. Yeah, no, she's still alive. She's still alive. She's, okay, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, person. <laughs> <laughs> no. she, I haven't seen her in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, first job you get when you get out of here, be Kirsten Dutz. <laughs> right? I have to apologize. <laughs> but um, basically, like she's got this mental disorder at the beginning of the movie, and nobody really gets her. Um, and and she's you know she's off the rails, and melancholy, like I said, is the type of disease. I believe that it's like believing that the world is going to end or something but then like this meteor is actually coming for earth and the world is going to end i Everybody did see this i did out. i did kind of check this out but i never really focused in on it so yeah i'm gonna watch yeah. it again every well my conspiracy theorist boyfriend convinced me to watch said film <laughs> But everybody is freaking out at the end when the world is ending and she's so chill. Like she's so Yeah, cool. yeah, um, yeah. And so I kind of, that's kind of how I take it. Like, not that I was freaking out before, um, but you know, I did have a lot of stuff that was going on. I was doing a lot. Like I said, I was teaching, subbing, teaching drama. I teach private lessons. I was acting and I'm a mom of two kids trying to, you know, one of them is a junior in high school trying to make sure he gets to college. So I, I have a lot of hats and a lot of things that were going on. Um, whereas now that like everything else around me is crazy, I can just be like, huh, and I can focus, you know, on, on what it is or what my goal is so that I can be prepared for when the world is back to normal. So, I mean, I don't know if that's really a word of advice for anybody, but, um, you know, you just kind of, kind of have to like, like write down like I have a vision board that I look at every morning you know writing down your goals and what it is that you want to get out of this like what do you want to learn when you come out on the other side what kind of person do you want to be like what skills do you want to have gained or what do you want to have worked on as a human being um you know I've seen like a lot of people have have changed humanly you know they're nicer um I've talked to neighbors that I haven't really spoken to since I've lived in my neighborhood for two years. Mm. Um, so, you know, in, in that kind of way, you know, do, maybe you want to change or develop yourself as a person. It just, uh, you know, you just have to figure out what it is that you want to accomplish on the other side of this thing. You know, the, uh, I feel like it's a reset. It, it happened by accident or however it happened, but the world or the earth itself is resetting. Like, you know, pollution is down and turtles are giving birth on beaches they never came to before and things like that so you know it's our time to have like a rebirth as well we can change the people and come out better on the other side yeah it's interesting that you say that um i read a statistic yesterday that this march is the first march in 
a while that there hasn't been a school shooting. Um, wow. Right. I, I was like, really? That's yeah. insane. Um, so you're absolutely right. Everything is a reset, including us who need to take advantage of this time period to reset our priorities and our principles and our health goals and all of these things that we were too busy for, we just couldn't fit it in and just didn't have the time to do. I think that uh, whatever, however you see uh, the creator, whether it be God, Jah, Allah, Jehovah, Buddha, uh, Yahweh, whatever you want to call the creator and its grand scheme, it has caused us to double think and also to pay more attention to the dangers and pitfalls of this, these conveniences and technology. So I, um, I appreciate your perspective, um, even if you find it to be, you know, uh, somewhat, you know, minimal and personal, but you already said you're a minimalist. So we're going to go with that. Um, wrapping it up, I, I, I want to give, you credit um, as a parent. I did not know that you were a parent, uh, mm -hmm. much less the child of your child. Your you have a junior in high school, yes. which I find remarkable because you are yet a senior in high school. So I don't know how that happened. All right, your young baby face. Uh, <laughs> me, I'm over here looking like Father Time these days. You know, in fact, you know the beard is quite lush these days. It is getting quite full, um, and I'm okay with that. How are your kids making out during this time period? Um, they're doing pretty good. You know, they um, it was an adjustment for them. They thought it was like an extended summer vacation. So, you know, as an educator, I gave them a couple weeks to be like, all right, let's just chill and relax. And then it was like, okay, um, we're making a schedule and we're doing some classes. Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know, my last name is Morgan. So I made a schedule and it said the real Morgan State. And mm. it was literally like from nine to one thirty, they had classes, the regular classes. And then I, if, if I needed to create curriculum for them to do for those classes, that's what they were doing. Um, I was online, you know, looking up um, what it's going to look like for, because he, you know, my junior has to start submitting for colleges in October and he right. hasn't even taken his SATs yet because they canceled them. Um, and so when they do start back testing, he'll only have an opportunity to take it one time before we have to apply. And he's trying to get into USC. So, mm. uh, you know, that's a pretty difficult school to get into. Um, so, you know, it was going to webinars about like what it's going to look like and what I can do. Um, and like my son is doing his virtual tour of USC today, this evening, and then he has another one on Friday with his specific department to talk about what it's going to look like getting in. Um, I mean, but you know, other than that, they're doing, hey, they miss their friends. It, it was funny. I asked them what was the first thing they wanted to do when this was over and they said, go to school. <laughs> and my kids are, they're good students. They do very well in school, but they don't like school. They do well because they know they have to, to move forward. And my son did make some good arguments as to why he doesn't like school. Um, which the studio equipment is also for him because okay. they don't, he can't focus on the things that he enjoys doing in school, which is general ed. They don't really right. give you an opportunity to, you know, do what you love, but that's a whole other topic. But sure. um, he wrote a page paper about why school was stupid and he made good points. So I can't really knock him, but um, you know, they, um, they just, they miss their friends. They miss being able to just go and hang out. Like some of my son's friends drop off care packages on the steps and knock on the door and run away. Um, so they all just want to see each other and hang out with each other. So they really miss, um, and, you know, we co-parent. So my son is with me all the time because his dad, um, he's a personal trainer. You know, he's around a lot of people. Um, so he hasn't been to see his dad in a couple of weeks. So he wants to go, you know, see his father. Um, so, you know, that kind of thing, it's, it's difficult for them. But they're older, so it was easier to explain to them what was going on and um, why we had to be so precautious. Um, and so, they're, you know, they're doing okay. Well, big ups to you. I am the father of two 20-some-odd-year-old young men who are... Um, fending for themselves uh, under my guidance. I'm, uh, as you can tell, I'm not in New Jersey right now. This is not New Jersey. 
Um, I'm in an undisclosed location, um, very, <laughs> very far away from New Jersey, which is a hot spot. Um, but I'm always uh, monitoring their movements and progress. And uh, for anybody who has a parent, is, who is a parent right now, I, I give utmost credit um, because it's a scary time. It's a difficult time. And uh, the younger your children are, it's harder to explain. Um, however, the older they are, it is also difficult to deal with because you, you see their hope. You have to manage their hope and, and, and make sure that they are looking further down the road than just these little incidents to know that it's going to be okay. So uh, big ups to you um, and dad uh, as a co-parent out here doing what he's got to do. And, uh, you know, to your sons, uh, my message is to stay focused, listen to your mom and dad, stay strong because it's going to be over. And when it's over, you're going to be right back at it. So um, for anybody, this has been a great sort of conversation. I know we've been all over the place, uh, but I want to bring it right back around to uh, our, our reason for sort of meeting. I met you because of your short film journey. Uh, I want people to be able to support you in your efforts as a writer, as an emerging director. How can people follow you? Um, so my social medias, all of them are the same. I have um, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and they're all Nicole, and it's N-I-C-H-O-L-E, Shamir, C-H-I-M-E-R-E. -E. Um, all of them are the same. So they can follow me there. Um, Journey is on my IGTV. It's also on Lamar K. Cheston's um, IGTV. Um, I will probably add it onto my website. I have not at this point. I have to do like a new... I don't know what I what kind of tab I have a media tab for like stuff that I've been in but nothing that I've written so I don't know if I want to do a separate tab or if I'm going to put it there so I have not added it to my website yet but that's my name too nicoleshamir.com um but yeah you know um you can keep up with me on social media I'm pretty active on social media um and I you know I respond if anybody's you know looking to reach out as far as work um, and, and I can second that. Um, she does respond, ladies and gentlemen. If you're interested, hire this young lady. She is D-O-P-E, for real, and a multi-talent at that. And let's not forget that Journey can also be found at Queen City Film Festival right now uh, for a limited time. Quarantine Theater is running Journey. Uh, we've had thousands of views. We've had dozens of comments. We've run dozens of watch parties. People are excited about this film. It is called Journey. You can visit our YouTube at QC, uh, Queen City Film Fest, and J. And for all of those who have been watching this, you already know me, but let me say it again. I am Lamar Maxson. I can be seen at Lamar Maxson on Facebook and Instagram, nonstop show group on Facebook and Instagram, and Queen City Film Festival, www.qcffnj.com. This is Quarantine Conversations. Episode escapes me. I don't know the number anymore. I've lost track. It might be episode 17 or 18, but we'll figure it out at the end. Please follow us. Please stay in touch with Nicole. And Nicole, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been a real pleasure. And enjoy that sunshine. It looks very sunny when you're sitting there. I shall. I shall. I love the sun. <laughs> I burned awesome. my forehead the other day. That's a whole other story, too. But, you know. <laughs> oops. Oops. Keep it covered. Put some, put it some was. Line. My hair was covered, but my forehead was not. And I had a line across my head. I fell asleep on my hammock. So, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> Here's a lesson, everyone. Don't fall asleep on your hammock without the no. proper sun blockage. And that's yeah. that. <laughs> Stay tuned for more quarantine conversations. Thank you. Peace. Thank you.